No, let's just look at the head. Spark plug threads okay. The seats look like a clean up. I've got a broken stud out the uh, exhaust. We might show that being done on another head later on, but not for a minute. Uh, so everything's good, even the mounting bolts underneath. I've got good threads, nothing stuck in them. So happy day. So that leaves our push rod tubes, which in this case are a bit out of shape, as you can see. So <coughs> I'm going to try and make that round, just because it's here. And then I've got to mention why it's a complete and utter waste of time. But you'll see that shortly. So, uh, just get a deep socket that will you can actually get in if you can get one in. This is quite badly crushed. There. And then just massage it gently around. Go up a size. Wait. Try to two sizes. Applying the pressure where possible to the uh, area of damage because you don't want it going too bad out of shape. And then if it does look like it's going out of shape. Suck it all over there at some edge, get them eventually. Yeah. Which you can then use to close it back down again if you need to. Try and keep it round. There. That's alright. Certainly usable. I mean, you could spend more time, a bit off there, you could spend more time, as much time as you want to. Spend on it really. But that's certainly round enough. It's no worse than that one, that's for sure. Certainly round, that's probably better than that one looking at it. Uh, yeah, certainly round enough to uh, be reusable. But sadly, we come to the point of our video. I don't know if you can see that. Rotted through. And here, it's not far off, rotting through. So, we're going to have a crack at getting these out. Now, I don't imagine this is going to be a very simple job or a very pleasant one. But it's got to be done. The rest of the head's good. The guys are good and all that sort of stuff. So it's a very much saveable head. And as replacement heads now, I don't know, I can't remember, 250 quid more. Yeah, more I think. Push rod tubes are about 12 quid. So if we can get away with it, we can save this head for 25 quid as opposed to 250 quid. So the first thing we need to do is measure how far this took out from the head. Now I've only got a ridiculous long ruler, if there's anything I've got to hand in here. Which is a shame, but there you go, that's all we've got. So, from the flat face to the end of the tube is 105 millimetres. So let's square that up to make sure I'm not deceiving myself. 104 and a half. And this one. 105. So 104 and a half and 105. So if we go over 105 as our finished position. I don't think we're going to go far wrong. Slightly skew with that as well. Anyway, it doesn't matter, they've got to come out. So, 
They pass through the head. I don't know if you can see that. They pass through the head through there. Exit here. They're sitting very slightly proud, so remember that, very slightly proud. And then there's a genuine tool, which of course I do not possess, which fits inside them and has rollers which uh, spread the tube, so it's a tight fit in the head. But I don't have them, so we're going to do it a different non-factory way uh, and hope for the best. So the first thing I'm going to do, I think, just for ease of use, is I'm going to cut them off so they're not sticking out for miles. For which I'm just going to use a hacksaw. I'll bring you back when I'm done. Right, so I'm going to uh, cut a slot inside each of the tubes to try and provide a gap, which I think can try and collapse the tubes and try and get them out. I'll put the hacksaw through the head, as you can see. I would prefer to use a pad saw handle. I haven't got one, so I just have to be very careful. So basically, I've got to try. I'm going to try and keep it parallel at all times because you don't want one end cutting more than the other. Just try and keep it square and give it a go. Again, it's just going to be lots of uh, gentle sawing until I, I think I'm getting near the target. So again, there's no point you watching me saw away like that. So I'll bring you back when you get somewhere, or I think I've got somewhere, and we'll just see what happens. Right, I'm definitely through down here. I'm starting to go through at the other end. How far in we are in the middle, I don't know. So I'm just going to give that a few exploratory taps. Let's see if we can start anything moving. Just use a flat punch to begin with. Just see if we can get any sort of movement. Right. Okay, so we're getting some movement at that end. I might try grabbing that and just try turning it. To the top. With a not a crimping tool. Let's just see if we get any movement at all. Not a lot is the answer. That sounds pretty loud, I'm sure, but I'm just tapping it. More hacksaw in. I'm going to put a second slot at 90 degrees to the one I cut originally, see if that helps. Right, cut a second slot as best I could. I've got that much out, so I've cut that off. I've uh, knocked in all round again on the underside. I'm using a kingpin bush tool with a bit of heat in the head. I'm just going to try a few more taps, see if we can get it moving further. Definitely going. There we go. So, it's out. And clearly, my hacksaw wasn't good enough. But there's no damage to the tube, the alloy head I should say. That's nice and clean. Yeah, that's nice and clean. Good, so I've not scraped anything. So for the next one, I'm obviously going to have to be less tentative with the hacksaw. Let's try that one, see if we can... Uh, I must confess, so I was deliberately taking it easy because clearly I don't want to damage the head. But I obviously hadn't gone through all the way 
as I had hoped. So let's try the second one and see if that will work any better. Right, I'm definitely through the top and bottom. There's no arguing with that. In the middle. It's honestly hard to tell, it really is. Uh, I don't want to go any further because I'm through there, through at the top. I'm guessing now, so I'm going to have to just try collapsing again like I did with the last one and see where we get up to. So, let's see if this one goes any easier. See, it's definitely split, I don't know if you can see that, but it's definitely split it properly this time. So the middle might not be uh, all the way through, but the end certainly are. I'll try grabbing it again, but I'm not hopeful. Definitely got it more this time. Right. We're going to go back to a bit of heat and uh, try drifting it then. Our first push rod tubes come. So a new old stock genuine citron one. I have another one on the way, which is an aftermarket one. So when it comes we shall compare the two and just check relative sizes and things. But there we go, that's one of them, that's what we're going to be using. Right, the uh, second push rod tubes come from ECAS. It's uh, made by Burton in Holland. I've measured it up and the uh, outside diameter is 0 0.04 of a millimetre smaller than the Citroen one, which is surprising. Normally aftermarket stuff I found tend to be a little bit bigger. But anyway, a marginal amount. I don't think it's going to make any difference. So now we have to look at what we're going to use with it, which is a sleeve retainer, bearing retainer, whatever you want to call it, bush retainer, call it what you like, it's all the same stuff really. Now, the retainer you want to use depends on how loose your tubes are really, which we will move on to now. So bear with me one second while I sort this out. Right, the tube should go in with a light sliding resistance. Now the Belgian firm that makes the uh, tool say that you can lightly sand the top of the uh, tube to allow it passage because in theory Oh, come on. There we go. In the theory, there we go. Right, so that's a, a nice firm sliding fit. That's what you want. Because in theory, it's just held by the compression of the upper part, which is what the tool does. So let me just check. So that should be 105 as we measured before and it's actually 104 and a half which I think is what the other one was. Good! So 
We now know that's in the right amount, which is pretty jammy because I just pushed in. It's about right. It's sticking out very slightly at the top, like we know. Now, we need to apply some pressure now, gentle pressure, whilst the sleeve retainer is doing its job. And I'm going to use an M8 raw bolt. Two types, you get like the sleeve type, which is expanding there. This type, which has got longer slots, which does exactly the same thing. So it doesn't really matter which. So we want the pressure. You can see it's not even pressure. It's quite short space. So I want that just under the surface of the head. And I'm doing this just because, not to try and flare the tube, because it won't do it. Well, at least it won't do it very much. But it just applies pressure to assist the uh, bonding agent in the uh, sleeve retainer to do its job. Right, remeasure, sorry about that. That's the problem. Try again. Yeah, very slightly. It's not a good day for dropping things today, I'm afraid. Bear with me. So I'm just gonna do that again. Obviously, because you're tightening it, there is a tendency for it to want to move. Right. I think that's enough pressure. Let me just double check that measurement again. Right, so I'm now going to leave that overnight. I'll fit the other tube and leave it overnight as well, obviously. Um, now, when it comes to uh, bush retainer, sleeve retainer, whatever you want to call it, bearing retainer, they've all got different names. It very much depends on how much free play there is between the tube and the head as to what you want to use. Now the, the best advice is look at the Loctite range, the Loctite, Loctite website, because they do a range of different strengths and different gap filling compounds that go up to half a millimetre, which is you know, a huge clearance in all honesty. Um, so really, even if your head's worn and the tubes are a bit loose, luckily that one wasn't, that took a reasonable amount of effort to push in. But if they're loose, they will still have something that's likely to fill the gap you need to fill. So that one very much depends on how bad things are really. So I will fit the other tube. Now the only other thing, which I've never done, but I was doing this and somebody suggested it to me some time ago, uh, a mechanic of my acquaintance who I respect, and he suggested 
why didn't I put a smear of very high temperature silicon sealant around that gap just to make absolutely sure there were no leaks? Um, and the answer is, I don't know. I've never done it. It may be something worth, worth considering as a belt and braces approach. I've never tried it. But something to bear in mind if you want to try it. If you have tried it, let me know if it works. I don't know. Let me know, please. Because as an additional uh, precaution to prevent oil seeping the way down between the tube and the head, it may be worth doing. I don't know. Anyway, I'll fit another tube, make sure it's measured up, leave these overnight, and then we'll come back and check they're okay, which I'm pretty certain they will be, but you never know. Right, second one's ready to go in. I wasn't going to show you this, but you might as well see. It's the same. Oh. Very slightly tighter, perhaps, but this is the citron one, which is very slightly bigger, as we know. A little bit more. One hundred and four and a bit. Yeah, that's probably about right. Close enough, they weren't exactly they weren't identical when they went in. Oh sorry, they weren't identical when they came out, and they're not identical as far as reach out of the head either. So they must have been very slightly different lengths. Let me just double check that. We don't want any major errors, do we? No, they're identical. Right, okay. So we'll use the other sleeve connector, this type, on this one. Right, that's it till tomorrow. Right, let's see how they're gone. solid. Lovely. Exactly what I wanted. So there we go. Now that will have saved the cylinder head. I can reuse it. The technique is not mine, I must hasten to add. Um, I think you might find it referred to as the French method in other places. That's certainly where I first heard about it, off a French guy many years ago. Uh, and it works. At least it has worked for me. Whether it will work for you, who knows. This, is a, this isn't a how-to, this is a how I did. So it's up to you if you want to try it. It's up to you if you want to try it. The Belgian repair kit, which is available, which I believe will cost you about £350 delivered to the UK. It's your car, you've got to decide what the best source is, what the best method of repair is, or whether you should just hand it over to your local specialist and let them sort it out. But there you go. I just thought you'd like to see what I've done. And that's it. Thanks for watching.